Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the structure tutorial series. In the next couple of videos, we will talk about the techniques which Struts2 provides us to validate the input parameters coming in from the browser. We should validate the data before they are actually passed to the business layer or the service layer or the data layer. Like there could be some scenario where we want to validate the password for some minimum requirements. Like it should not be less than a number of characters. Similarly, we could have some field like suppose joining date which the user should provide and we should validate that the date entered is not greater than the current date or validate the format of an email ID. Now Struts has provided built-in validators to take care of these kind of validations. Now it has inherited these validators from the Xwork. Now these validators actually don't require programming. We can just specify the validation in XML file on what should be validated and what all validators should be applied to them. Sometimes for some complex situations the basic built-in validators are not enough. In that case programmatic validation is used. So we can say we have two types of validation techniques. One with using XML and we call it as a declarative validation and another one is programmatic validation. Now it is the validation interceptor that is responsible for loading and executing the built-in validators. So let's see how we can do the validation for the fields of the action class. First we need to determine the action whose input field needs to be validated. Then we need to provide an XML file which will be used for doing the validation of the input fields of that action. We need to follow some rules for the XML file name. Now its name actually should be the action class name hyphen followed by the validation dot XML and it should be present in the same package or folder where the action class resides. So suppose if the action class name is login action then the XML file name will be login action hyphen validation dot XML. Now there is a problem here. Now suppose there are multiple actions pointing to the same action class and we need different validation rules for each of these actions. So we need multiple validation XML files. For this situation they have provided the convention to add the action name as well in the XML file name if required and we can have multiple XML files for multiple actions which point to the same action class. So if you see in our hello world project we have two actions aware and the server action context and both are pointing to the hello world action class. So the file name for the aware action will be hello world action hyphen aware hyphen validation dot XML. Similarly for the server right action context action the file name will be hello world action hyphen server right action context hyphen violation dot XML. And if we have a single action element pointing to a single action class then the file name will be simply uh, the action name like hello world action hyphen violation dot XML. And this XML file should be present in the same package uh, in, in which the action class resides. Okay, next, next we need to determine where we need to forward the control to if any validation error occurs. And this is done by declaring a result element with name as input in the action element. So if some validation error happens, Struts will forward the control to the input JSP which is mentioned in the result element. We will see these things in action. Now, all the built-in validators are already registered so we can easily use them without worrying to declare them. If we are writing our own custom validators then we need to register or declare them before we can use. I will discuss about writing our own custom validators in some subsequent video. Now, let's take an example to check this validation technique first. Now, let's take this login form in our book auto application. Now, in our login form we have two fields user ID and password and we want to validate that they are not empty when when we submit a form. So if user is not providing any of the user ID and password and hitting the submit button or login button here 
then we will present the user with the same login page or login form with the error that the user ID or the password should be provided. Now one thing to note about the validation is that the validation of the fields of the action class happens after the properties are set by the params intercept and before the action method is called. Okay, let's move ahead now. The action corresponding to this login form is verify login action. So if the user submits this login form then the verify login action is triggered. Now let's see its XML file. Now we can see that for this verify login action we have the verify login action class. So the validation XML file for this class will be verify login action hyphen validation dot XML and it should be present exactly in the same folder package where the action class is. So let's create the XML file in the same package. Iphone validation dot XML. Okay, now let's find out the doc type or the DTD for this Xwork validator. Now, since the validation logic is inherited from the Xwork, the Stras2 has inherited from the Xwork, so the DTD can be found in the Xwork jar. Let's open this web app libraries here. We have Xwork core. Open this. We come down here we can see some Xwork validator DTDs. I'm planning to use this Xwork validator 1.0.3 DTD. Just open this. So here we have the doc type for this validator. Let's copy this and paste it here in our XML file. Okay, so this is the DTD we need to use for the Xwork validator. Okay, now let's check how to write the validation rules here in this XML file. Now it has the validators element which is a root element. Okay, inside validators we can have n number of field elements which correspond to the fields which we want to validate for our action class. It has one attribute or name and in its name attribute we should provide the name of the action field which we want to validate. In our case it is user id. Similarly let's create one field for our password. Now after this each field element can have n number of field validator elements where we need to specify the validators to be used for this particular field. In its type attribute we should provide the name of the validator to use. For checking the empty fields we will use the required string validator. Now this validator will check if the string is empty or the input field is empty or not and if it is empty then it will add an error to the input page. Now for so for both of these fields we will put the field validator as required string. Let's copy this and paste it for this field as well. Now we can provide more validators if we want for our fields and they will run sequentially. The field validator has one more attribute called short circuit. It can be true or false. We set it to true if we don't want to continue to the next field validator if the current field validator has failed. So it won't execute the field validators below this field validator if the, this current field validator has failed. By default it is false 
so it continues to use all the validators even if the current validator has failed we will just leave it as it is we can even pass some parameter to the field validator if they require using the param element so it has one param element where we can pass some parameter to this field validator now this required string field validator doesn't require any parameter so just, we just remove it the field validator should contain one message element by which we specify what message to be displayed in the input page if the validation fails you can give some message here user id cannot be empty create a message element for password as well password cannot be okay so our validation xml file is ready we have put the fields to validate and the validators to use and the message to be sent to the input if the validation fails now one thing we also need to take here is that our action element should have a result element for input name because that's where the control will be forwarded to the forwarded to if the validation fails so for our verify login action here yeah, we have one result with the name input so it will take us back to our login page if some error happens in, in the validation phase ok now our code is almost ready we can just build the project and test it out Okay, now let's try giving nothing here in user id and password let's let's leave them as empty and then login okay so we got the error for the validation of both the fields that user id cannot be empty password cannot be empty from our validation xml file now let's give something and then login okay so now we are able to log in with the non-empty fields but but it's throwing error if the fields are empty so our required distinct validator is working fine for both of our action fields and this is it for this video i hope you liked it thanks for watching